For the last few months, I've been looking out of the window of my office. You can see it just behind me. And watching a new building being built with lecture theatres for the students. And a few days ago, walking to lunch, I thought this is a fantastic opportunity to talk about the chemistry of concrete. So here we are on the top of the building site in a hard hat, special gloves, periodic tie, and we're ready to go with chemistry of concrete. And as I speak, the lorry is arriving with the concrete ready to be poured and we'll watch it coming out. So now they're pouring the concrete out into this skip and they're going to crane it up to where we can see it being poured out. So this is what I've been watching out of my window. You can see the concrete skip going up now on this big crane and it'll go high over our heads to where they're going to pour. <laughs> the chemistry of concrete is quite simple. Somewhere you dig up limestone, calcium carbonate, and then you heat it up and drive off the carbon dioxide to make calcium oxide. Some people call it lime. And then you mix this with sand. Sand is silicon dioxide, SiO2. Silicon is in the same group as carbon in the periodic table. So you take the mixture of sand and lime and you add to this some sort of stone. It's known as aggregate. What they're pouring here is 25% aggregate. It's recycled aggregates. They haven't dug the stone out from under the ground. They've used recycled stone because my university is very conscious of being green. We have one of the greenest campuses in the UK. When you mix these together, the aggregate, the silicon dioxide and the lime, and you mix them with water, then a chemical reaction starts. And as long as you keep it moving, nothing sets solid. But as soon as you let it stand, the silicon dioxide and the calcium oxide react together and make a sort of jelly, which gets harder and harder takes several days to get really hard and then it reacts with the carbon dioxide in the air for years and years and years afterwards. So Roman concrete that was made 2,000 years ago is really hard because it's had 2,000 years to react with the carbon dioxide in the air. But this is some that was made yesterday and you can see the aggregate here, these lumps sticking out and it's already very hard. I can't break it. And the important thing about concrete is it's very strong in compression. If you press it, you can, you can put an enormous load before it breaks. It's not nearly so strong in tension. If you pull it, I'm not strong enough, but if you pull this, it would break fairly easily compared to what would happen if you compressed it. And to make it even stronger, people put in steel mesh, you can see some here, the reinforcement rods, which the concrete can bind to the steel and this gives it added strength. As far as I know, nobody's ever going to run out of concrete. The cliffs of Dover, the white cliffs of Dover, the symbol of Britain, are entirely made out of calcium carbonate. There is possibly problems with the carbon dioxide you generate which add to global warming, but we're never going to run out of concrete. Concrete is much weaker if you have bubbles in them, so that when you pour the concrete, it's then vibrated to make sure that all the bubbles float to the surface. If you do get bubbles, it breaks easily. The chemical company ICI, about 30 years ago, made a special sort of cement which you could get out all the bubbles and you could make springs and all sorts of strange things out of concrete or cement that normally you can't use. They even made bottle tops for drinks bottles out of cement. The main difference between cement and concrete is whether you add the aggregate, whether you add this extra stones. And the people who pour cement can make different mixtures for different purposes. They make 
special mixtures to use underwater because concrete will set even when it's underwater. For example, if you're building a dam or if you're building <coughs> some sort of bridge where it's on very wet soil, perhaps not completely underwater but in very saturated soil. It is very cheap, it's very strong and you can use it in all sorts of different applications. You can tune it and you can also do it very quickly. This beam that's being poured over here will be ready tomorrow. I had a colleague who died 10 years ago called Martin Barker who was interested in the chemistry of liquid sodium and he did some experiments with liquid sodium reacting with concrete. This is the ultimate nuclear reactor disaster when the core melts and sodium coolant goes into the concrete and he found that there was quite a violent reaction depending on the aggregate but there was some very interesting chemistry and I persuaded him to give a lecture that he called some concrete results from sodium chemistry and it was a very successful lecture. Well it just feels like some stones but you can see here are the pieces of aggregate and the concrete itself, the cement sand mixture is pretty wet now and over the next few hours this will set solid. The foreman here said that it'll be hard enough to remove the shuttering in eight hours. It'll be dark by then so they'll leave it till tomorrow morning. <laughs>